Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom, a channel dedicated to Earth Science topics, chats, videos, diagrams, and uh, and more. So today we're looking at plate tectonics, looking at subduction zones. Now we've, we've kind of covered this um, briefly with the convergent plate boundaries, with the classic ocean to continental plate boundary, and a little bit with the ocean to ocean. And subduction zones have to have their own video because they are very integral part of this active plate margin, this destructive uh, function of uh, the plate as it dives down. So the video is going to cover the locations and context where these occur, what they are, and generally a nice introduction to why we look at these in detail. Then we look at the diagram, what I would do in the class, how I would draw it, how I'd explain it with features and the different uh, annotations and labels. And then third, what we're gonna look at is the types of subduction and how they classify uh, these types and the examples. Okay, so that's the video, guys, and uh, let's go. All right, so where are these subduction zones? Now, really, there's about 82,000 kilometers of convergent plate boundary on Earth. And they are the destructive plate boundary. It's the active plate margin that includes the subduction. And obviously, some of this uh, AE2000 would include the Indian Eurasian convergence, which is mostly a continent smashing the continent, and that causes uh, erogeny and the Himalayan mountains, but Him mountains as an example. Okay, also the uh, uh, Italy into Eurasia and, and the Alps. But the rest, the rest, the convergence is going to be either ocean to ocean, which includes subduction, or it will be a classic ocean to continental, which also include, includes subduction. Now, what you have is this primarily with ocean to continental is primarily the Pacific Ring of Fire. So around the Pacific Ocean, being an oceanic plate, you have these uh, convergent plate boundaries meeting with these different uh, continental plates, whether it's North American, Eurasian, uh, Indo-Australian, but they're going to be around the Ring of Fire. And we call this due to the amount of volcanoes that are present of the volcanic arcs. And the subduction is obviously due with around this main ocean. Now, there's some in Southeast Asia, but pretty much it's around the Pacific Ocean. So that's where we're going to look at our subduction in more detail. So what is it, subduction? Subduction is to move, right? So this is to move. And sub is usually under, right? As in submarine or um, basically it's, it's, it's to move under. So looking at when two plates meet. There's a plate here and a plate here. Don't forget, the plate is the crust and lithosphere combined. When they meet, we have convergence. And the plates are based on their composition, based on their age, and based on their thickness, and then density, okay, which also is included in their composition, the minerals. By the rocks, um, and also the uh, velocity and intensity of the convection currents in the asthenosphere. All these play a role in what's going to happen. So, in general, subduction is one plate, let's say, take the left one, okay, this is a little racer right here. The left side plate is going to do this, and this is called subduction. The process of one plate being forced under the, un the other one. Okay, process of forced under. So we call this under thrust. Okay, now this is to do with isostasy, 
which is the uh, the science of floating, buoyancy. Um, it's also negative buoyancy. Are you in there as well? Buoyancy, the the uh, the product or the effect of uh, sinking, basically. It's the fancy word for sinking. So one plate's going to sink, and this plate, this this uh, we call it the slab. So the slab is going to be dragged down, pushed down, pulled down. Obviously, we have gravity as a kind of a universal, consistent force, but also we have the convection currents in the asthenosphere. Now, that's basically it. You could start with this and just talk about the uh, movement down, or you can talk about isostasy. Isostasy, um, which we'll get onto in a different video, is based on um, the physics of the, the weight of the object plus gravity and the uh, force applied to that uh, object in, let's say, water. And uh, there is the uh, force of, of gravity versus the force of the water pushing back whether that, whether that object will, will float or sink. Okay, so check that video out. So the next one is density. And we discussed density in the different videos, and you know, ocean plates are usually basalt. So ocean plates are generally 3.0 grams per centimeter cubed. That's the average density. It can fluctuate, uh, but generally it's 3.0 grams per centimeter cubed, whereas the continent or continental plate is mostly granitic. And that's going to be a slightly less dense material of 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. Again, these are averages. They do fluctuate around the world with different thickness and composition of different crusts. But you have there a difference in density. Now, this one here, the basalt, is clearly the higher density material, whereas the granite or granite one, or andesite one, is slightly less dense. So when they meet, the denser, heavier plate is going to be the one that subducts. So just from a simple diagram like this one here, you can see that this plate must be denser than this plate, so less dense. Try and stay clear of lighter. Okay, so it's less dense and more dense. So here we have the diagram, right? This is one of the diagrams you can draw, which is going to show an ocean-to-ocean -ocean convergent plate boundary. Now, how do we know it's ocean-to-ocean? -ocean? Well, on both sides. So let's say we take the two sides, and let's just do a little uh, dashed line, pretty much. Just like, here we go. Okay, so this side is going to be ocean as we can see, and the same on the other side, which is mostly ocean. Again, it's the majority which makes up is either ocean or continental. So what we have here, we have these similar layers. We can actually add in the layers pretty simply. So you're going to have the crust and lithosphere, and down here, asthenosphere. As you can see, the crust is extremely uh, thin, okay, with the... Um, with this other plate here, this other oceanic plate, you could have a little very thin crust like this. There we are. So this would be the crust right here, lithosphere and asthenosphere. So we have convergence, so we know that the, the uh, convection currents are going to uh, drag and move the plates um, towards each other. So we have this convergence. And we have also this plate. It's oceanic plate, which is basalt, okay, and it's going to uh, subduct. So the slab right here is going to subduct. Now I have um, also have the same over here. So we have this oceanic plate, again basalt, and but it's a lot different. It's a lot different, okay. So generally we have our convection current, and also we have our trench, so right here where they meet and the ocean floor gets uh, brought down deeper, we have our ocean trench. So I could go into where the, the slab's going to 
Mel will get onto it later on. But that's generally the, the link. Now, to add on more detail, what we should do. The convection currents on the side that uh, the plate that is not subducting, that is uh, being pushed up or staying uh, buoyant up here, okay? If they're both ocean plates, what, why do they, why is one subduct? Well, it comes back to the age. Age of that ocean plate, how far it is from the mid-ocean ridge. The further away from the ridge, the thicker the uh, plate and also the colder the plate. That creates a denser, slightly denser uh, composition uh, and, 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 and mass of this plate. So this one here is dense or a little bit denser than the other ocean plate, therefore it's going to subduct. So they're similar, so it's not going to be that the angle, the angle is going to be kind of shallow, around 25 to 30 degrees. And that's going to be more compressional, so it's going to push things. Now, right here, because we have in this area right here, we have a lot of friction, a lot of tension, stress, earthquakes, shallow earthquakes, some low-grade metamorphism because you're going to start deeper and increase in temperature and pressure on those rocks. are going to create uh, metamorphism on those uh, sedimentary rocks on the top layer and obviously the uh, igneous rocks with basalt, and they're going to change to metamorphic. And the different grades can be seen throughout the, the uh, subducting slab from the ocean floor down to depths of over 400 uh, kilometers. So next to the ocean trench, we have this area that's going to scrape off and create layers of sedimentary and igneous rock scraped onto this ocean plate over here. And this is called an accretional wedge. And it builds up, and it can also be called an accretional prism as well, based on the shape. And you get these layers and layers and layers of sedimentary rock, igneous rock, all laid up. And we can call this a four arc. And you call it a four arc. So right here, call it a four arc. So it's a, it's a um, pronounced, usually submarine, um, submerged kind of um, uh, concentration of material that goes above the regular uh, ocean floor and rises up, okay? And then behind it, behind it, right here, we can get what's called a four-arc basin. It's an elongated area that's stretched out. There's a depression between the four-arc um, four and the, the magmatic arc. So right here, we're going to have the magmatic arc. So the four arc basin is in between this. All right. So then the convection currents on this side, on the right-hand side, they're going to be pushed down like this. And that creates a what's called a mantle wedge. Like a, like a triangular, triangular area that's wedged in between the above ocean plate and the subducting slab. Now, this mantle wedge is what's going to actually melt. It isn't actually the slab so much than it is at the above um, mantle or above lithosphere or asthenosphere that actually melts. And how does that happen? So we call this a flux melting. Now, it's to do with what's called hydrous minerals. Because you have an ocean, right? Uh, where there, where the point of the um, subduction is in the slab, you have oceans. So water is going to be diffused and squeezed and pressurized into the minerals. And there are some minerals that easily take up water in their chemical composition. They're called hydrous minerals. And there's various groups. And these mineral groups that have the, the water, the water or the hydroxyl, OH, hydroxyl, um, uh, elements and combinations inside of them, they get taken down with the subduction. 
And when this happens, it gets to about 100 kilometers depth. And the pressure increases exponentially so that it changes the mineral structure and squeezes out all of the, the water and hydroxyl um, uh, components out of the rock. It's literally like you're squeezing out a, um, a towel or a sponge and all the water gets squeezed out and flows out and the sponge gets drier and drier and drier. So there's a process of dehydration where all the free water and hydroxyl things go straight into this, this uh, mantle wedge. Now, the cool thing is that these two, they lower the melting point of the rock. They soften the rock, they allow the rock to melt at a lower temperature. So that increases and encourages magma production in this area. And the magma production, production can rise up. It can also rise up and at the same time have what's called decompression melting. Now, this basically means that when you reduce the pressure, you allow the solid to, to melt and have a phase change because you're allowing more space for that element, that atom to, to, uh, to use. The volume is going to increase. Therefore, you allow these materials, these rocks, to melt because there's more space and less pressure to keep them solid. They become liquid. So decompression melting and flux melting works to send up this magmatic material up, and it forms this magmatic arc or volcano, volcanic arc, at a given distance away from the, from the subduction uh, zone, the, the area where it starts, right here. So it will be a given distance of, let's say, 100 to 150 kilometers, whereby it takes time for the slab to go down to a depth of 100 kilometers, where the pressure causes dehydration, then causes flux melting, up comes the magma, and forms these volcanoes. So you see this in the Caribbean, you see this in the Philippines, in Japan, we have these, these uh, four-arc basins, these, these volcanoes, and then behind it, you have the back-arc basin. Right here. And this is the cool thing as well. In this part of the asthenosphere, all right, you see this like uh, stretched area. Now that's stretching because you have the uh, pressure currents being forced down, forced away and down. So some of it is going to come back up to replace what is being pulled away from sub through subduction. And this up, this asthenospheric upwelling of material will come up and start to apply tensional stress on this area of the ocean plate behind the, the volcanic arc and start to push through. And what you'll have is the basic forms of rifting, like we have in the uh, East African Rift Valley or Rift System. You have this rifting occur where this, this, this basin or depression starts to form behind the volcanoes and it's called a back arc basin. So it's usually larger than the fork basin and also can form what's called a marginal sea. A marginal sea, which or marginal basin, marginal sea. That means it's parallel next to the continental uh, crust. So it's a very small sea. And we, we, we can uh, observe this uh, with the Sea of Japan, the Philippine Sea, where you get these islands and then a little sea. And then you get the continent, the mass, the, ma the, ma the, the large continent. And uh, the Japan Sea is a very good example of that in the, uh, the Eastern Pacific Ocean. So that's pretty much it. You can go de uh, detail into the uh, dehydration process and the ke chemistry. You can go into detail with the back art basins and show more options with uh, where they are on the planet. You can look at the uh, volcanic arcs, both for oceanic and continental as well. Uh, we'll do a video on the southwestern United States with the old um, plates um, in the Pacific Ocean that are subducted and is causing a back arc basin to form. Um, and uh, you guys, hope you enjoyed this video. And please subscribe if you haven't. If you're new, uh, it'd be great if you can su subscribe and see more videos. And we're going to discuss more on plate tectonics in the next video. Thanks a lot.